Hello and welcome to my second draft in my drafting mastery series here on limited intelligence. In this draft, I really want to show you, first of all, my, the first premier draft that you actually go into where you have a bit of time constraints. So obviously I cannot talk about the cars as much as I, um, as I could in the quick draft that I did in my last video. Uh, link to that video, of course, in the description down below. Check that out if you haven't already. In this video, I really like to show you the concept of well, what uh, is so-called easy drafting, the easy way to draft. So basically what that means is that you find your color, your lane, at least one color very early on. In this case, in this draft, uh, I had exactly that happen to me. I found my color, my first color very early on and I just was able to stick to it and decide later on what second color I actually wanted to go with it. And it was a while back and forth, you will see. And that's just the easiest way that you can draft. And if you're really unsure, I think it's the way that you should, you should try to go for, just try to stick to your one color and um, get all the cards that you can. And then most of the time you can end up with a halfway decent deck. And in future videos, of course, I'll show you some other drafts that can go completely differently, where you swap colors, you jump back and forth often. Um, so yeah. Um, I hope you enjoy the content. If you do, please don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe and so I can see you in the next video in the series. Okay, let's get into the draft. Okay, so what I'd like to do first is look at the uh, rares and uncommons. Um, co coveted price is not very good in limit, so I stray away from that. Looking at the uncommons, the Windrider Wizard is absolutely fine. The Taunting Orb Mage is quite good actually. Um, so is the Vastford Fortification, I quite like that as a double faced card as well. Then looking at the um, the commons, I think the standouts here are the, the Zim Royal Mage, the Light Priest and the Rabbit Bite. Um, but of all these cards, I like the Taunting Orb Mage, I think um, the most by a pretty decent margin, I would say. So I'll definitely go with that pick here. Okay, so second pack. Um, the rare's gone, so let's have a look at the uncommons again first. Fearless Fledging is great. Spring Mental Cleric is so-so. If you play three colors, it can be fine, otherwise, eh. The Vine Gokko is really good though. I really like that. Um, I think it's Probably together with the Fearless Fledgling, I'd almost put them on the same level. I think the Fearless Fledgling as a card itself uh, is probably a little better than Vine Gecko, but um, the Vine Gecko fits our first pick really, really well. So I'll definitely go with the Vine Gecko. Here, looking at the comments, there is nothing that uh, comes close to any of these two cards, I think. Brawling Felida, Shepherd of Heroes, and Feed the Swarms. Sweet Feed the Swarm are all okay, but none of them are great, so I'll definitely go with the Vine Gecko here and see if we can get into green somehow. Um, okay, in this pack, <clears throat> I think by far the best card in the pack is Journey to Oblivion. I'm kind of surprised that it's still here so late. I think it's by far the best white removal in um, this whole set. So um, this would probably be my favorite pick. Um, I also don't mind the Moss Pit Skeleton. It's really good, though I'm not a huge fan of the Kicker subtype. And yeah, I don't like taking double color cards so early. Remembering the packs beforehand, green and white did look kind of open. So I'll happily take um, a Journey to Oblivion here, a white card to go with my green as there's nothing green in here that is too great because Under Stomper is fine, Skeller Heights I don't really like at all. So I think in this case we cannot continue drafting the easy way uh, yet. So we have to take a second color for now. Okay, in our fourth pick we get um, a dual lands, which I like to pick up later if they fit your colors, but it's definitely not something you want to take too early. Emiria Captain is absolutely, uh, is a really, really good card, but it doesn't fit into the um, white green archetype. So for now, I'd, I'd rather stray away from it and rather take a second Taunting Orb Mage. Again, looking at the commons, I think the best common in this pack is probably the Molten Blast, but 
uh, it's, it would be a third color and the Arbor Mage is overall just a better card. So I'll definitely take that here and be quite happy that I have two of them. Now, looking at this pack again, all the commons, uh, uncommons and rares are gone. So um, you really want to try to stick to a color if, if possible, if you don't have to take a terrible, terrible card. Um, I think by far the best card in this pack is actually Rabbit Bite and it's on color, green locked open so far, so I'll very happily take this as green has oftentimes has a hard time with removal, so I'll probably be pretty uh, fixed on green at this point. In this pack, looking at our two main colors, white and green, so white is only the Seagate Banneret, which I don't think is too great, especially not in if we play uh, green white. Um, the Horn Beetle is is quite good or can be quite good, especially if you get some counters going. I don't know if I'll do that yet, but it's I think by quite a large margin better than any of the other colors that we could take here. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the Nis Sandicon, so I think we can just continue drafting the easy way here and take the next green card. In this pack, again, no uncommons, no rares, so basically just looking at our two colors, Cliffhaven, Cell Sword, and Practice Tactics, both not very good in the uh, together with green, and looking at our cards so far, we're definitely green. The Scythe Cat is really, really good, so I'll happily take that here. None of the other cards, as you, I mean, I mean Zulapodulis and Gloomhunter are both fine, but none of them anywhere near good enough to take here. So at this pack, now at this state, um, I'm not sure I'm gonna be white, so I wouldn't mind taking blue for the kicker um, subtype, but there's nothing here, and I do quite like the, the Bly Blade. I think it's a very, very uh, valuable one drop. So I'll definitely take that here. There's nothing that even comes close. Just continue drafting the easy way. Um, yeah, this pack is pretty much dry, there's nothing too great in it. Um, I'll just take a white card because I think all the cards are basically more or less the same power level. Um, I don't particularly like the links, I don't necessarily want to play it, but it's fine, it's white, so I'd rather just stick to a color that I already have a little bit of uh, some something of already. So in this pack is also pretty dry. I could either take a, a scale. The heights would kind of fit with the um, with the horn beetle. I could take a seagate colossus. Again, seagate colossus, not too great in this archetype, but I think it's actually better than scale the heights. I don't I'm not a huge fan of that card, so I'll just take a uh, an open card more or less. Here again, decision pretty easy because under stomper is by far the best card in this pack, I think, and especially as it's on color as well makes the uh, pick even clearer. Um, I don't mind a, a snare caster, not a great card. I may end up cutting it, but none of these other cards would even make me consider taking another color, so I'll just continue on like this. Pressure point is such a terrible card that I'll actually rather take a black card and put it in the sideboard here because I'll never be playing pressure point. Vivian Hunger I can also put it in the sideboard, nothing too great. Okay. We open up Akiri Fearless Voyager. Um, I do like this card a lot. If I was fixed on one of the two colors that it has, I may consider it. But here, not so much. I can either take an Amiria Captain here, which I think is fine, but again, it doesn't really fit the color combination too well. Skyclave Cleric is also the same thing. It's it's fine, it's a dual, uh, it's a the modal phase card, so it was it's never, Never going to be bad, so I may take one of those two, overtaking a black card. Um, I might also consider the, the Geyser Mage, because the Geyser Mage fits really well into the archetype that you want. If you go into um, blue-green, and then definitely green here, so... And this cuts off blue so well that I, I think I might actually uh, take this here, considering that the first pack I didn't get any... Uh, almost no blue pass to me could be the best be the best choice here. In this pack, the standout cards for me are the War Leader, which obviously is not going to work for me. Um, Royal Eruption is really, really good. I like this card a lot. Again, it will be my first red card, so though it's a bit tough to pass it, um, I may I may do so. 
I'm, I'm really eyeing the Nullet colony here. I think this would be the best example um, of just drafting. The easy way is just to stick with the colors that you already have and now the colony is a, is a very good card. I think it's one, one of the um, better green commons for sure. So I might just take this here over anything else though. My heart does bleed a little bit passing the Royal Eruption to be honest, but I think this is just the best, best way to demonstrate the easy way of drafting. This pack is pretty dry for us, to be honest. Um, there's nothing in here that fits with green that isn't green. Broken Wings is definitely a playable card. It may be the pick here. It would definitely be the way to continue the easy way of drafting. Though I think this early into um, the draft, I'd rather just take another color. And uh, I really like the Black Bloom Rogue. I think I think it's one of the better uh, uncommons in the in the set. So I'd rather take that. Sign of the Swarm only really fits with the the white black. So it's not really a consideration here. So I'll just take another black card for the sideboard and still be a bit undecided on what our second color should be. And this pack <laughs> makes me a bit sad I didn't take the first Royal Eruption because with two Royal Eruption, I probably forced my way into, um, into red here. I could still take it at this point. Not sure it's the right pick or if I should maybe just take the Moss Pit Skeleton because I have been seeing quite a lot of black and um, this does kind of fit everything. And it's a bit early to take a Canopy Baloth here, especially as I don't think this card is too great. So I'd rather just take an Uncommon here and see if I can maybe go into black after all. This pack again, Vast for Fortification is great. Um, Throughout the Grave is probably, is, is really, really good. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's for sure probably the best card in this pack overall. But as we won't be playing too many of the party types, um, we, I don't know if we can even get back two creatures most of the time. Maybe we can. Um, but I think I'd rather just have the Vast Foot Fortification. Kind of just fits the overall idea a bit better, especially if we go black. Now we get past the second Mosfet Skeleton, which um, really makes me want to go into the black green archetype, especially as black kind of seems really open. Um, and at this point, looking at the black cards I have, though a lot of them aren't that great, I think this in power level this is so much higher than another colony or second Kazando Stomper, which I don't even necessarily want, that I'll just uh, take a, a gamble quite happily here. Get rid of my other color so far. Here, thinking just about the archetype that I'm most likely to go at this point, which would be um, black green. I want counters. That makes the Dauntless Survivor better than probably any of the other cards. Turn Timber Ascetic is pretty good. I definitely wouldn't mind one of those, but I think the Dauntless Survivor just fits the two Moss Pit Skeletons so much better that I'd happily take that here. In this pack, I can either take a Gruul Das Maglord, which fits the archetype obviously quite well, um, <clears throat> but the Zoff Consumption I just like quite a bit. Um, I'm probably very likely to get more of these later on if I want to, and I'd rather just have a nice Mortal Face card. So this is a bit of a tough decision, stick to the archetype or take the stronger card. I think taking the stronger card is oftentimes just a better idea. We actually wheel the Shadow Stinger that we opened um, I don't mind taking this here. It's definitely not the best card in the pack, but we do have some rogues. We have two rogues, which can make it fine. So I'll take it. I'm not sure we'll play. It doesn't necessarily fit the rest of our deck too well, but it's definitely fine. Here, I'll definitely take a Feed the Swarm. I'm lacking removal. So um, even though this is definitely not one of the better removals for this archetype, removal is always good. As I uh, showed in my first video, it's very, very important. So I'd rather just have a bit of a clunky removal than none at all. Same goes here. I could either take a scale the heights to get the counters. Um, could be fine. Broken Wings is also fine, but I think I'd actually rather have the scale the heights here. Drawing a card seems okay. Putting on a counter is fine. Definitely take the Baloth here, looking at my curve, you can see I'm, I don't have any 4 drops yet, so I'd rather have a 4 drop than another mediocre 3 drop, which I don't necessarily want to play. I'll take the Brute here, not sure if it will be played or not, but it's the only color, uh, card on color. 
Then, um, yeah, we open an old priest, priest of Oblivion, which looking at all the other cards in this set, uh, in this pack, I th think we're pretty sure the um, black green at this point. Bit sad I passed the first Moss Pit Skeleton, but the old priest, priest of Oblivion is just really great, especially if I can kick it. It fits, um, yeah, it's just an overall great card. It's just by far the strongest card in the pack. Um, nothing even comes close, I think, in this point, so. Pretty easy pick here. Okay, then we get the Maddening Cacophony. Yeah, cool, but we're not, we're not um, blue, obviously, so fortunately got to pass that. Now we we got to check out which which card we want. Obviously, there's nothing in the uncommon slot for us, so I think that the real choice is between the, the Muck Lord and the Visionary. I think most cases I'd rather have the Mock Lord than the Visionary here, but as looking at a curve again, which is also something you want to consider, I'd rather have another 4-drop. Having another party card could be fine for the Seagate Colossus. Don't know if I'm playing it yet, but could be could be a possibility, so I'd rather just have the Visionary here uh, than something that kind of fits our archetype. Um, here I would value the, the Dual Land quite highly if it was our colors. Only one of the colors fits, unfortunately. So the choice is again between Feed the Swarm and Dauntless Survivor. So do we want more enablers, more synergies or more removal? I think I would actually like more removal at this point. And I think the possibility that the, um, the Dauntless Survivor comes around again is a bit higher than Feed the Swarm coming back again. So I'll just take that here. We get the um, Horn Beetle, which fits the archetype really well. We don't have too many um, expensive cards. So again, both of these, this is a, more of a payoff. This is more of an abler. A bit, I don't know if it's a very clear decision here, if, if it weren't so that this is uncommon, this is common. And we've already seen one, got one of those. So I'd, I'll happily take another beetle here. I think if, if, if in doubt and you're not sure if, if two cards are on the same power level or not, um, or, or which one is stronger, if you think they're basically on the same power level, I would always err on the side of the uncommon, just because it's very unlikely that you'll see it again. Here, yeah, there's nothing really too interesting. Pelica Predation is always fine. Mortal Face card with an okay castable, so sure, why not? There's nothing else in here that is even remotely interesting, so I'll definitely be playing that just because I can always play it as a land. That's why this is a pretty clear decision. Now um, we can have a look at this Skyclave Pickaxe. We're not really doing anything land folly, so. Hmm. I could just take an Expedition Skulker. I do have a few things that kind of uh, gain off having rogues. So I think actually in this case, this is stronger. Um, again, I think power level is probably pretty even, but looking as we have already some rogues and we have other rogue payoffs, this is the choice here. In this pack, I really like the Blood Priest, but it doesn't fit our archetype at all. And the Subtle Strike, though, I think most of the time it's just mediocre. It really, really fits our deck well because it just gives a plus one, plus one counter, which we really want. That's a really nice combat trick, which will basic, basically uh, always give you uh, a blowout. So clear choice here on the Subtle Strike. <clears throat> um, Oblivion Hunger is actually fine in this archetype. It's the only archetype that it's okay in. I could also take the pickaxe, but I don't think I'll be running over my opponent with big creatures. Um, not sure I really want a second Oblivion's Hunger. Yeah, in this case, as I don't already have Oblivion's Hunger, I, don't, I probably don't want to play two. I don't even know if I want to play one. I'll just take the pickaxe. I probably won't play it, but yeah. Here, yeah, Mind Carver doesn't fit our archetype at all. Strength and Solidarity kind of fits our archetype, so. Sure, why not? Again, not sure if I'll play it. it depends on how many um, on, on how many party members we actually have at the end of the day. If I can get two plus one plus one counts out of it most of the time, it's fine. Here, the Muck Lord is the clear pick. Um, blood price, I think, is a bit a uh, high price to pay if you don't have much life gain, and I don't have any so far. So, um, except for the Null Priest, Priest Oblivion, uh, Null Priest of Oblivion. Yeah, so I think it's just the Mucklord synergy wins here. Absolutely nothing in here, so it doesn't really matter at all what we take. Just take any card. Uh, I would recommend going for the Honor Common if you can. 
So I could take Innocent Zendikon, um, or Spare Supplies is also fine. I don't have too many 4 drops, so I may just take the Zendikon here. Again here, there's nothing in here at all, and nothing in here either. So... Sorry, I, got, I had the wrong scene set up, but I think, I hope it didn't matter too much. Um, okay, so now we have 49 cards, so we have to drop a total of nine. Um, so just going through it, Skyclave Pickaxe is our only landfall um, thing we have, except for the for the Scythe Cat, which I basically have more for the counters than anything else, so I think that can go. Strength of Solidarity, I'm not sure yet. Blight Blade, I definitely keep. Fortification, I definitely keep. Uh, Skullcar, I'm not sure about yet. Just going through what I definitely want to drop and what I don't want to drop. Um, yeah, the Stinger doesn't really fit uh, the rest of our deck too well, even though we do kind of have rogue payoffs, but eh. The Muraza Brute is the same. It doesn't really work here too well. This gives us another counter th um, possibility, but it's just so-so, I would say, so eh, I'm not too hot on that. The Snare Caster I probably want to drop, but I've got to see if I have enough reach stuff um, to, to, to afford that. I like the both Horn Beetles. Um, I think I'll get rid of the Colossus here. I'd rather have the Kazandu Stomper. Um, gives me more landfall and it and especially gives me the possibility to pick up my modal phase card later and I do have a number of them. Now looking at our curve we are kind of cheap so I think we can definitely afford to drop one land here looking at our um, how, how much we have above. Mm, I think I'd rather drop a swamp especially as we have um, two black duels actually I gotta check let's see what I dropped in the sideboard before because we actually have three black duels looking at like this uh, and I'll definitely pay the black room rope because of that so we have to drop four more cards um, yeah okay so expedition skulk I think can go because we don't have that many rogues that it actually is worth it um, looking at our party setup, we have one cleric, one warrior, three wizards, and three rogues. So, strength of solidarity, we'll probably just give one or maybe two counters most of the time. If it was an instant and not a sorcery, I would value it much higher, but I think this way, just the Vastwood Fortification is a much better card for our deck. So, I'll get rid of this here. And I don't think I'm too desperate on counters. I have enough things that kind of uh, get counters naturally. The colony, the vine gecko will get things for kickers. So will the mospet skeleton. Yeah, we have the dauntless survivor solid strike. We have a, a decent amount of ways to um, actually get uh, our counters out. So yeah, I think in that case, I'll just ditch the snare cast because we have enough removal to stay on top. On the same uh, and in the same line, I'd probably want to ditch the Zendicon because I just think the Bailoth is better. We have a pretty cheap curve, but we have a bunch of ways of getting back some things. Uh, well, at least we have the Mospel Skeletons and um, the Null Priest, so I think this is a pretty decent deck. Um, I'm looking forward to see how it actually performs, but I'll definitely keep it the way it is. Okay, so looking at a starting hand, um, I think it's really, really good actually. We have a perfect two drop, we have a three drop. Um, so I'll keep this here and I think I will actually play the Vastwood Fortification as a land if I do not draw one now. Um, simply for the reason that I can uh, curve out perfectly with the Black Bloom Rogue later on. Okay, I draw a land so I'd rather have this as a spell now because we're kind of cheap <clears throat> and I can go uh, all the way to, through to three without a problem here. Looks like our opponent is playing um, the Cleric deck, which is obviously probably overall just a bit of a, a stronger archetype. 
but that's fine. We'll just start with the skeleton. <clears throat> and a skeleton is something that you I kind of happily trade um, because I can get it back very, very easily, especially having the Vassal Fortification on hand anyway. Okay, we're flooding a little bit here. I'll just attack here, see what our opponent wants to do. Okay. So in this case, I can decide do I want to blow him out and uh, have a 3-3 skeleton on board. I think, um, is it a stronger move than getting a 2-3 out? I think in this case, actually, it is not. So I'll just take it, take the trade and play my rogue. This is his menace, it's pretty strong um, attacking and I can always blow him out with the vast fortification uh, when he blocks, <clears throat> depending on what, what he plays, um, but I can, yeah, kind of force him to block with uh, awkwardly or not at all. And then I can always decide if I want to get my mosque pit skeleton back. Okay, so I'll just attack here if he wants to trade both of his creatures um, for my my rogue. That's absolutely fine with me. That's definitely a good trade for me. So I'll take this here. I will not um, play a combat trick if not necessary. Okay, he gets plus two, plus two. Um, so I can only kill one of his creatures now. Even if I play the Vastwood Fortification, there's still no way I can kill a second creature. So it would be wasted. I would obviously get my Mosque Pit Skeleton on top, but I'm not too bothered about that right now. So I'd rather just take the trade as is and play my Arbor Mage Unkicked. And if he doesn't play anything that, uh, that that stops me from doing it, I will put the plus one plus one counter on the Arbor Mage at the end of uh, his turn. So I can put the Mosspet Skeleton back on the top of my library draw and cast him with the Kicker. Okay, so I'll probably just attack with the 2 1, which is fine. And I said, just to get all the value out, I'll put the skeleton on the top here. Then again, <clears throat> I will happily attack here because if he wants to trade two creatures for one, I'm winning this game for sure. And then I can play the Skeleton Kicked, which gives me a strong 5-5. Five, five. And with my opponent only having now two cards in hand, one, one card in hand now, um, I think I'm, I'm pretty far ahead on board at this point. Um, and I will attack first here. See if he can do anything against it, it doesn't look like it so i'll just play my cassandra stomper no question okay unfortunately gets rid of my rabbit bite but i'll take back my forest 
and I think this game looks pretty good for us. If he doesn't have a rem removal for both creatures, which our opponent doesn't, yeah, this game is pretty much over. So looking back, just a short recap, um, what went wrong, I think, um, yeah, basically our, our opponent made um, the same mistake a few times, which was taking blocks which were not profitable for him, like when he had the Cliffhaven Cell Sword and um, the, I think it was the, the Malakir Blood Priest out, he shouldn't have taken that double block, he should have just let me attack and attack me back for much more because that will put me under pressure and that way he just stays on, uh, our opponent just stays on the defense of the whole game and there's no way he can actually, um, yeah, regain ground from there. That, that was pretty much how I won the game, I think was pretty much my opponent's mistake there. Okay, our starting hand is again pretty decent. Um, definitely gonna keep this. Don't wanna play the fortification as a land here as it doesn't actually um, give me more options from my hand because everything just costs two at this point. Exception of course being the kicker of the Null Priest of Oblivion. Our opponent actually has the mulligan down to five cards, which is a pretty good start for us. <clears throat> Just get the skeleton down without the kicker here. So, in here, I think I'd rather just um, I'll take the trade actually. No, actually I won't. I won't take the trade because uh, you can get the Skyclave Shade back so easily. I don't want that at this point. Um, okay, so... I think the best line here is just to attack. Trading is good for me at this point because our opponent has way less cards in hand. So... I'll just go with the attack here. <clears throat> My opponent doesn't want to block. I'll play a forest so I can vast with fortification if I need to, but I'll definitely play the second skeleton here. <clears throat> and now I'll pretty happily trade off one of my moss pit skeletons. <clears throat> okay, all that's fine. I said, happily take the trade here. Nothing much to lose. Um, <clears throat> I could just put the vast for fortification on my moss pit skeleton, but I think I'd actually rather not get my moss pit skeleton back quite yet. So, here I will um, rabbit bite. No, I will not actually not rabbit bite. I will just attack and play my null priest unkicked. I don't have anything to get back at this point anyway. And I'll just be a bit patient with my rabbit bite, see if I can maybe get something a bit better with it later on. Because the Hark Constrictor is not too interesting for me, as the Skyclave Shade cannot block anyway. And, um, yeah, and at this point, my Null Priest will just run through for two, two damage. Okay, he has a second Hark Constrictor. Um, I cannot block here. And, as said, um, I think now is a good. Time to get back my Moss Pit Skeleton. So 
I will put the counter on the Null Priest of Oblivion at the end of my opponent's turn. This gives me back three life every turn. And uh, yeah, I'll just attack with both here. If he wants to trade, that's absolutely fine for me. With my Moss Pit Skeleton, I'm really happy. If he doesn't want to trade, even better. I'm quite ahead on, on uh, in the race here. And here I'll play my Horn Beetle first, because next turn, if I uh, kick my Moss Pit Skeleton, I get three 1-1 one, one, um, creatures, which is really great for me. <clears throat> Gives me a lot of uh, chomp blockers that can uh, stabilize my, my board a lot. That's the Royal Eruption, that's fine for the... Okay, Sky Dancer, it's also okay. Okay, here I'll just attack with both. <clears throat> if he wants to block my skeleton, that's actually even better for me. Because now I can kick my second skeleton and put my first one just on top of my library again. And as I said, I get a bunch of jump blockers here, <clears throat> so my life total is pretty secure at this point. I think the game was pretty over next turn. I would have just rabbit by a uh, bit um, the Hellion um, and I would have crashed in for lethal anyway. So, yeah, there's not much our opponent could have done here. I think the better choice would have been just to stay back and not do actually do anything, um, not attack. But yeah, I think that was a uh, that, that game to be perfectly. Fair and honest, um, we probably won it off the pure fact that our opponent had the mulligan. Also, our opponent kind of made a mistake with his sky uh, clave shade. Uh, he should have used his land drops to replay it because that creature puts so much pressure on on you, and there's not much you can do about it because every, every time he has a land drop, he can just replay it again and again and again. Uh, especially if he can start kicking it, and it becomes a five three. It just becomes such a huge threat, and just free attacks with it every round. Um, that I have to jump or trade most of the time, so I think that that was one of the mistakes because I think the Skyclave Shade is actually a pretty much uh, not 100% a bomb, but very, very uh, close to being a bomb, so I think that was pretty much where the mistakes were made. Let's see if we can keep our win streak up. Um, yeah, looking at this. And obviously it's a bit awkward with the mana, but we have um, three cards at least that we can play off uh, just green, so I think it's still fine. We have a one drop, we have a two drop, we have a four drop, in which you can just draw one land. We're, we're doing really, really well. Supply blade first. And this actually becomes a, a four drop with... Ah, um, oh, perfect. With the kicker as well. Um, here I will not attack with my Death Touch because I do not want to trade my Vine Gecko for his Skulker. And um, I don't mind trading my Blight Blade for the Skulker. So I, 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 I gamble taking two damage for doing one. It's just not a good trade overall. Yeah, if he attacks, I'll definitely block, but probably shouldn't. Um, here, I could um, play the Null Priest unkicked, but I'd rather not, especially as the Vine Gecko makes it a bit cheaper and I can uh, kick my colony next turn, so yeah, I will not, I will not, uh, I'll just do nothing this, this round, I think there's no, um, playing patient is, uh, gives me more of an advantage than playing greedy here, and, uh, or, or Actually, is the more greedy to play to be patient here, obviously, but um, I think it's uh, 
overall it has a much larger payoff. Yeah, I said I'll happily trade these two. It's fine for me. It takes away his ability to give this death touch. Unfortunately, he has the answer to it. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, I think the right play here is to simply just play the Bailoff. In the next round, I can uh, drop because I have a land on hand. I can I can drop it and play the Colony Kicked afterwards. Uh, and I would not mind trading these creatures as hopefully soon I can. Um, Okay, this is kind of pretty telegraphing that he can that he has something, but as I said, I don't mind trading off these creatures too much. Um, yeah, because I can just bring bring back my bailiff with the kicked uh, North Priest of Oblivion. So yeah, you can tap this and give give this death touch. Overall, I don't know if it's a great trade up for our opponent. Uh, definitely cast it for kicker. Gives me the stronger, strongest creature on board. So I think this game is pretty much even at this point. Um, obviously, I have a strong creature out on board, but I think it's decently fragile. Okay. So, I think this turn, it's the best play to first of all just attack. Then I will play my Null Priest Kicked. And get back my strongest creature, which is the Bailoth. I did, obviously wouldn't mind uh, the Gecko, but I can already cast my Arbor Mage Kicked. And yeah, I think the Bailoth is just... Just gives me more more tempo on the board, more more board strength. So I think getting back to Bailoff is just stronger here. Okay, so um, here becomes the question: Which, what do I want to do? Do you want to play the rogue? Well, it's not very mana efficient. I could play the, the Arbor Mage together with the rogue, but I think the right move this turn is just to play the Arbor Mage kicked um, on the uh, Narlet colony actually and throw out another land so we can get six damage in here. Force him to block my Narlet colony and attack with everything. This way I get to kill two of his creatures, trample through for one more damage, and do a total of eight to uh, our opponent's face and get two life back. So I think overall that was a very, very good turn for us. Okay, that's a really strong card. Um, now, I have a few options here. I can uh, definitely attack with the Bailoth. The question is, do I want to attack with the Bailoth and the Null Priest? Because if I run in the Null Priest, he has to block with both. Um, the other question is, do I want to play the, the Rogue as a land? To make this strong enough that he has to block this creature and uh, my null please priest will get through for sure hmm i think actually the best the best turn here is just to attack with my null priest and the bailoff if he double blocks my null priest i'm fine with that i'll trade it for the, the sky dance uh, and do the fall damage happily um, there's no, there's no way this can really go bad for me. I think. Okay, so I said I'll happily kill the the sky dancer. 
get our opponent down to two. Um, he has five cards in graveyard, so I think that makes the Horn Beetle stronger. If this was close to getting Menace, this would definitely be the better choice. But it's not at this point, so... Yeah, our opponent needs to get out at least two creatures, or remove one creature and get one out, otherwise uh, our opponent will lose in the next round here. So let's see what they can do here. No, looks like they have nothing. So we finish with our third win in a row. Let's see if we can continue on the win streak. Yeah, I think this was a pretty even game overall. I think our opponent definitely made a mistake by taking the Null Priest trade, because they're um, basically I traded a two drop for a three drop and got four damage in that way. So he probably just should have uh, blocked my bail off at that point. I think that was maybe a mistake, but it's always a bit easier uh, in hindsight, of course, to say these things. I'm not, not entirely sure. Uh, like I'm, I'm sure that trade was bad. Um, don't don't uh, don't get me wrong there, but I'm not I'm not sure overall where I won this game, but. Because it, it, it did look kind of close for a while, but um, yeah, I think, he, again, our opponent just traded too, too liberally. Okay. With this hand, I will play this off consumption as a land, just to ensure that I can uh, go through all my creatures pretty well. I can curve out really well. And here I will play the Null Priest. Um, unkicked. Uh, because I have nothing in graveyard yet, I want I want a creature out. So okay, so here's a good um, good point to make. Again, here I have no advantage of putting out the land or a creature before attacking. So I would just attack first. I don't think there is anything our opponent could actually do, but uh, it's just the right move anyway. So I can hold up some strike if he tries to flash something in and blow me out or something along those lines. Just get out the scythe cat. Um, I usually like playing the scythe cat um, the same round that I can actually play a land. But here there I have no other real option as a 3 drop. So this is definitely the, the right choice. So I can start attacking with 3 hopefully next turn if our opponent has nothing uh, left. Oh our opponent is land screwed on. That's, that is a real shame. Uh, okay, so I'll just drop the land here, of course. And attack. Okay, I hope <laughs> our opponent's not rage quitting, uh, roping us. Okay, uh, into the royal is fine here. Again, nothing really for, that I lose. I mean, obviously I don't I do three less damage and I have to. Kind of, kind of dumb of me that here I'm, I definitely made a mistake by playing uh, the land first. So I will actually play um, the Black, Black Bloom Rogue here over the Scythe Cat because I do not have a landfall at this point to follow it up. And at this state, I do not want to drop the Black Bloom Rogue as a as a land because the only upside I really have at this point is giving a uh, plus one plus one counter to the scythe cat which is not that great. I'd rather have another menace creature out because with our opponent being uh, stuck on lands the likelihood of uh, them pumping out two creatures actually to block. Wow, oh, looks like I finally draw a land of blood. I'm glad that it doesn't have to end like this. Um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, I think the right choice here is just attack first and then I'll play Divine Gecko and uh, for now I'll just end the turn. I could rabbit bite uh, uh, the, the wizard but I think it's a bit early to do that right now. Um, I'd rather rabbit bite something perhaps a bit stronger next turn. Okay, that's fine. Gets, makes me draw a card as well. So I hope our opponent can draw another land. So does this game is not entirely decided just on on our opponent being mana screwed. Okay, get another land drop. Uh, 
Okay, so here I think the right line is um, to first of all tap your mana correctly so I, I can actually hold my rabbit bite up. Then I will play a swamp, get my scythe cat plus one plus three. And um, now I can either just rabbit bite something, uh, which I think is probably the best move. Uh, I'll rabbit bite the far side adept. Gives our opponent absolutely zero blocks, because. <coughs> oh, actually, that's not true. They can, can block the wizard. Uh, the, the gecko. Okay, they have the blowout. Really nice. That's nice. Okay, so that kind of forces us to hang back for one round here. But that's okay, because um, if I attack, they'll just kill one of my creatures. Um, there's no like killing the, the rogue or whatever. It's not really a good attack. I think here it's just better to wait. And attack next round with the with the arbor mage up, and get, um, well, kicking the arbor mage and give, giving the vine gecko a plus one plus one counter as well. Okay, to get some life back. Okay, so drop a land here first. Um, so I can kick the, the Arbor Mage and I can either get in for two, uh, five, nine and gain nothing really or I can put the the Arbor Mage on the Scythe Cat and um, actually kill his Shepherd of Heroes, which I think is a good trade for me. Yeah, I think this is the right trade. So on the Scythe Cat, I'll attack with everything and just kill his Shepherd of Heroes. Again, our board is just much stronger here at this point. And with the subtle strike in hand, we can hopefully force out a pretty decent trade for us. Okay, I have another good card. This is the point where I like to start holding lands a little bit. I may play it out, play out one more land a bit later on, but at this point, there's nothing really to gain. So, if I attack with everything, <clears throat> they uh, I can definitely kill one of the creatures that they block with profitably <clears throat> with the subtle strike, and make one of my creatures stronger. Um, I will probably lose. No, uh, these two have menace, so I'll probably just attack with these three and see how our opponent wants to trade. Yeah, I think that's the right choice. I'll actually attack with all because I don't really care about the other mate. I'm not sure, maybe this is a bit too greedy, but let's see how uh, they decide to block. Okay, with this being the block, um, I could decide to um, have both creatures die by giving... I think this is the play. I give the, the Falconier man is 1 minus 1 and the Arbor Mage plus 1 plus 1. And then that way my Arbor Mage survives 
and uh, I could get to kill both of their creatures. So like this and like this. Yeah, this way I get to kill both of their creatures, and um, my board presence is much stronger than theirs. <laughs> we actually had thirty life. I didn't even notice that. 300, just through the null please, the priest attacking five times now. And our black boom rogue is now at 5 3. Uh, I forgot that, that that would happen, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't count for the last attack though. I'll probably get rid of our rogue here. See if they have another creature to follow up, otherwise it will be a pretty tough next round for them because they have to block the Arbor Mage, as they cannot block the Null Priest just with one creature. The only blowout I think they could have is they, they had the Zulaport Duelist on hand. Um, but yeah, I think... Just attacking here is fine. They can blow me out somehow, perhaps, but I think overall the only trade I can see on board, I'm, I'm representing lethal. That is one of the, the basic rules of, of magic. If you represent lethal, just go with it. Don't try to change anything up and wait for your opponent to react. Yeah, the, like I said, the Zulaport Duelist could have been a blowout, but it's too late for the Zulaport Duelist at this point. Okay, they get to actually kill my creature. So they drop two, three, and they need two creatures to stop my Null Priest. I'm really hoping to draw one of my skeletons here. That would be a really nice draw. Give me a bunch of 1-1s. One I'm just going wide, getting a bunch of creatures out at this point. Um, it's great. So, I will play the Dauntless Survivor pre-combat here, put it on my Null Priest. That way both creatures represent lethal. Yeah, and that was too much for our opponent. They probably had one more flash creature left, but I wasn't going to do it against uh, a menace. Yeah, I said, never forget that. Um, this game pretty much started out with our opponent being extremely mana screwed, so I didn't... It wasn't lot, like I think our opponent actually had a pretty decent deck. Looking at the, the cards they they had and everything, um, they had a really good deck overall. But just being stuck on two lands for I think two two turns at least they were stuck on two lands and they had to even discard once. That just that's just a horrible way to start out, out a match. And who knows? It could have completely shifted the other way if they <clears throat> uh, if they would have actually drawn enough lands. Okay, so definitely keeping this hand again. This is one of the few times that I've actually played the Black Bloom Rogue as um, as a land as much as I hate it, just because it's my only black source, and I really want to start curving out as soon as possible. Get my Moss Blitz Skeleton down ASAP. <clears throat> just really like that this creature can come back so many times. Yeah, it's a right decision. Now, I probably will not play uh, the Arbor Mage unkicked here because I think it, this will not gain me much uh, on board. Okay, a bit sad now that I played <laughs> the Black Bloom Rogue, but that's okay. Um, I will trade here if they want to. That's fine for me as I have a way of getting back my Mospit Skeleton later on. Um, just drop any land at this point, I said. I will happily take the the three damage that they probably can deal to me next turn. That's fine, but just waiting around I think is better with the Arbor Mage and getting my, my Visionary down next next turn just is a bit of a stronger move overall. Disruption. 
Okay, the Riptide is not exactly what I want to see, but at least I have the answer with Feed the Swarm. So the question is, do I want to feed the swarm now or do I just want to get out my visionary? And I think I'd rather just get out my visionary here. <clears throat> then if they attack next around with the squid, I'll happily trade my skeleton forward. Absolutely fine here at this point, especially as soon as I can get one counter out. Um, I can play it kicked next time, so that's yeah, just makes it better. And I'll probably end up feeding the the Risen Riptide, feeding, feeding the Swarm the Risen Riptide. Okay. So yeah, I think, uh, Dumara Mystic will probably be pretty strong later on, so feed the swarm this, feed the swarm the Riptide, take a bunch of damage, but it's okay. Well, that's the downside of feed the swarm, like I just took six damage this turn which is obviously a bunch um and i'm probably not willing to trade my squ uh, the squid against uh, the visionary so i'm hoping they miss landfall because next turn i can then at least force them to block my skeleton okay Just have to play a bit risky here, hoping uh, I can get a decent target for my um, my other mage. Trading, I think, the seer for the visionary is fine. Three three for three two, it's absolutely okay. And the other mage, I will not mind trading against the squid next turn. Okay, we're flooding here a little bit, so really hoping that stops soon because. Now I have to stop playing a bit defensively. I said uh, I'll have to trade my other mage for the squid if our opponents attack, just because uh, I kicked road eruption. Uh, like I don't like going down to five against um, against red because a kicked road eruption into the face can just kill you, and that is not how I want to go out. <laughs> so it's just one thing to keep in mind when against red, there are there uh, five is like the magic number that you want to stay up, uh, over in life. Um, <clears throat> so that, that would put me exactly at five and two with two more mana they could just kill me with a void eruption okay okay a thunder rebuke obviously don't like seeing that either but at least they can't put that uh on our face I'll just keep attacking with the skeleton. Kind of hoping that they kill it somehow because with the vast wood fortification um, I can I can get it back. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, we're just flooding, that's kind of the problem in this game so far. Um, so, if they Thundering Rebuke my Arbor Mage next round and uh, have a land drop, I just lose straight up. So I actually cannot afford to, um, to block here, uh, to attack here. Even though I really want my my Mospel skeleton to die so I can get it back and kick it next time. Okay, I have another Geopede. Okay, at least we get another creature out here. I'm just gotta posture a little bit defensively here. Uh, get on the land out. This doesn't really matter at this point. Yeah, really, I think it cost us quite a lot too. We had to actually play the Black Bloom Rogue um, as a land and not as, um, as a creature. So this is where it becomes pretty dangerous and uh, we will probably lose this round. <laughs> yeah, so I'll probably Thunder will do this, which I cannot do anything about. So I think is there any way I can have my skeleton survive and get another counter through the muck lord? Probably not. So I have to block like this. And like this. And this way I get five damage. Yeah, I have to. I have to put the the counter on the on the Muck Lord. I really hope I draw something big next round. Yeah, our opponent was playing not really the cards that I expected because I was more expecting like a. Okay, yeah, this just goes so good on to two. We actually kill nothing of theirs, so this is good game. Give me a good game, they play quite well. Um, but yeah, there's no, no way for us to come back from here. Oh well, yeah, I think, like I said, two main problems was I played my Black Room Rogue as a land. I think it definitely wasn't the wrong decision, um, but viewing, uh, obviously, I would have definitely needed that creature and what would just compounded it extremely was just the amount of flood that I actually ran into later on so I said these these are things you can't really do much against it's a bit hard to say would I have won if I would have drawn like a, a decent amount of uh, creatures and, and, and spells um, and not just lands cannot really say I think our opponent had a decent deck it was more like a landfall deck than anything else but yeah these things just happen I'm not not too much to learn out of that uh, game, I don't think. Okay, next game. Um, yeah, this is a pretty horrible starting hand. Like the curve and everything is fine, but we have absolutely no creatures. So unfortunately, I have to mulligan this. <laughs> Again, get two feeds the swarms. Um, only one creature. Uh, 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 yeah, I think I'll keep this here and get rid of one of the feed the swarms. Then we'll hopefully draw some some more creatures because I really don't like mulligan. I don't want to mulligan three times. 
I'll play the vast foot fortifications land here. Again, just because I want to curve out as much as possible. Um, yeah, no, no real decisions here. I could, uh, I should have fed, fed the swarm. This is that was a mistake. I should have just used my feet to swarm on the, the links here. Okay, here I'll definitely play my visionary. Put it on the card. And looking at this hand, I do not want to play my soft consumption as a land quite yet. So here I can either take seven. Yeah, I think just taking seven is the right choice here. So feeding the swarm, the wall leader would probably be the best choice overall here. A bit sad I don't have two black mana because I could then use my subtle strike as well. Um, so I think I will actually have to end up playing my res of consumption as a land just because I need the two black mana here. Mm. And then I'll just play the bail off. And I will trade the Bailoth for the Expedition Champion. And I will trade the Visionary for the War Leader. Fine blocks for me. Okay, I get completely blown out here, so yeah, this game is just over. Terrible draws, um, <clears throat> wrong lands, not enough creatures. Sometimes games just go like this, I don't think there's much I could do, especially as my opponent was playing a very aggro deck that just kind of was the last nail in the coffin. So yeah, Some, sometimes you just have to live with these games going like this and can't really do much, that's okay. So let's really hope we can close out one more win here at least. Okay, looking at our starting hand. Um, Yeah, not too great, but not too bad either. Definitely good enough that I'm not gonna mulligan it. If I do not draw a land here, I will play the fortification as a land, which is now even a better choice. And with the Kazandu Stomper out, I can uh, grab it up later. Here I will just play the... Mm. I think the Null Priest doesn't really add anything on board at this point, so... But waiting until turn 6 is probably not a good idea either, so yeah, I think just playing the Null Priest unkicked here. It's just overall a fine choice. Um, not sure um, if I should have kept it perhaps, but... Obviously I can block the, the Nectar Pot, but I'm not too bothered about it. Um, life here okay here I will just play the black bloom rogue and not attack because obviously my attack one has no good outcome if it just double blocks I lose my creature without doing anything so that was pretty easy just to hang back here Again, I don't really have any good attacks at this point, so I'll just put out my Muck Lord, really hoping to draw two more lands decently soon. Build up my board until I get my Cassandra Stomper out, which is um, hopefully will be the creature that will, I can ride to, to victory. 
No, we're just getting a little bit minus food here. Opponent gets an awful lot of life, but I think overall it's fine. Again here, I don't really have any great blocks at this point, so... I'll just add my Dauntless Survivor to the board. Get a counter on my Null Priest. Um, but attacking here is again pretty fruitless, so... I need one more. <coughs> One more land drop, then I should hopefully be uh, be in the clear. At least I can play two more creatures the next two rounds. Build up my board. Okay, so we do get one more land, which is great. Just add one more creature to the board. So, noting the pause that our, our opponent has, um, looks like they do have some, <clears throat> some instant they can play. Um, maybe we can be a takedown or something like that. Oh, we have a Scoot Swarm a good card and I actually get copies of Scoot Swarm so yeah this is looking really terrible for me now because it's pretty difficult for me to get that creature under control. Every further land drop just doubles the Scoot Swarm count and it gets to a point sooner or later where it would be pretty difficult to get on top of that. So, yeah, I will just offer double block. Um, so I think they probably do have a combat trick of some kind, but I'll make, make them show it. This game is basically just... Okay, <laughs> this is just a huge blowout with all the Scoot Swarms now getting even more. Well, I don't know if there's any way I can actually, actually win this now. Yeah, with all these six Scoot Swarms, I don't know how I'm supposed to stop this. So I can either drop the the Cassandra Stomper, but I think it doesn't really matter what I do at this point. Our opponent just has a way better ball presence. Um, <sighs> I really don't see how I can win this from here. It's just um, yeah, I think a case of being outclassed on board, it has a great landfall, had uh, like a pretty good landfall deck, I mean obviously Scoot Squad <clears throat> is just broken if you can't do uh, anything against it right away, because mm, just the 6 one 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 is just, well, yeah. If he has another landfall trigger or anything, it, it's just so, it would just be so many, um, so many Scoot Swarms that he can just attack with everything every round and even though I can kill them, uh, kill everyone that attacks me, Ah, uh, there's probably no way of me getting back here into the game. But let's see. Definitely not giving up quite yet, though a sweep will probably be the only chance for me to win.
Okay, he gets rid of my Cassandra Stomper, and that pr probably just doesn't get rid of my Cassandra Stomper. Interesting. Okay, so. I can either use the other mage kicked and wipe his entire scoot swarm. Um, that could be fine, but I'm not sure if it's the right move here. Yeah, I think I'm just drop the horn beetle here. Yeah, I think as I said, I I don't think there's any way I can really get back from, from come back from this. Yeah, just another land drop. <laughs> has twelve scoots swarms. Uh, you just have everything I have. Uh, oh no, I actually can't have it. Yeah, I think well, one of the few chances I would have had is just to like one shot our opponent with the Arbor Mage, like put the Arbor Mage, uh, use the Arbor Mage ability on the uh, on, on our token and uh, just lethal them. But as they have 34 life, pff, there's no way that's gonna happen. So. Is there any way I can win this? Probably not. But I'm not one for giving up, especially in the last match. Uh, like this is a match that's gonna uh, kick me out of this this draft. But I don't think this because just uh, if, if he wouldn't have the Felidar, it could have could be fine because I could just like use the Arbor Mage on the Stomper and kill like his big creatures. And kind of hope to come back like that. But this way, the next attack is just so... Yeah, I said that. <laughs> I don't even know if this is the right choice, if this is what I should be doing at all, but... I think I'll just kill his Makini, um, Makini Ox and his Scythe Cat. Our opponent's Makini Ox and Scythe Cat. So Scythe Cat and the Ox. I want first. Animation is taking forever. <laughs> yeah, I say it's, it probably doesn't matter at all what I do from this point on. If my opponent has one more land drop, we can just have 22, no, 24 scoot swarms. Okay. Feed the swarm. Kind of makes things better. At least I can get rid of the feather this way. I'll just pass here. Again, every land drop our opponent puts down just 
puts us more into dire straits. Hoping for the skeletons that at least give us a little bit more ball presence, but our opponent has eight lands out, so he probably has at least seven, eight more in the deck. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to remember. Well, my goodness, he was our opponent was past some seriously good green cards. So, do I have good attacks here? I mean, our opponent doesn't really have good blocks on the Bayloth. And also not on the Rogue. So, I'll offer those two. If I were an opponent, I'd probably just take the damage at this point and rather just attack back. <laughs> Puts nine of his scoots one on my black bloom. Okay. At least reduce down the amount of scoot swarms. Definitely more important than the nectar pods at this point. Um, just the pure flooding of scoot swarms that can uh, can do so much more harm than the, than the one threes that I don't really do not care about at all. <clears throat> Looks like our opponent can't decide how to block here. Okay, so I said I do not care about these nectopods. Pretty happy just to kill some of the squid swarms. <clears throat> Again, I get at least two one ones through the putting the the counters on the the colony. <laughs> it's another land drop card. Okay. Okay, so I can probably wipe out pretty much. How much damage do I have here? I have 4, 10, 12, 14, 17. Hmm. I think just killing... I think, yeah, I think I'll do the land drop here to get my Bayloth bigger and force everything to drop to block my Bayloth here. And then I'll get in with everything that has more than one power. <clears throat> I 
and I'll definitely kill uh, everything that can grow here now over the scoot swarms. Okay, so I'll put the feather up first. And um, the um, fierce fledgling I'll put second. That's oh, actually really difficult to sort. <laughs> and um, I can either kill... I can try to kill the swarm shambler, but if our opponents it doesn't make a mistake, they can just make it stronger, then it will not die. So I'd rather just have the secure kill of the Scoot Swarm here. Um, oh no, actually I'll have to I'd rather have the secure kill of um, the Scythe Cat here. Yeah, let's do it like this. That our opponent would would have not made this mistake, so it's fine. We get to kill three creatures for one, which is really good. Your opponent's life total down a little bit. Cleans up the board a little bit for us, but things are still not looking great. Especially with another land drop now having 16 of these these goods ones. It's gonna be a tough one. And I don't have any Arbor Mages left that could actually <laughs> give me back. Because <laughs> that was actually probably my, my biggest chance with Arbor Mages to either um, kill the creatures that I don't want. Don't have any good attacks here because you can just block or can just block with the scoot swarm, so just have to wait. <clears throat> Perhaps we can just stall the game long enough so we yeah. so next turn our opponent can just attack with everything. Uh, with just all the scoot swarms and we should be in a pretty tough position from there to actually ever come back. Okay, that's interesting. I think this is a mistake. Uh, I think our opponent should have waited one more turn, so... I'll obviously take all the blocks I can get. We still take seven damage. Yeah, okay. If our opponent would have had a combat trick, this would have been an okay move. But without the combat trick, yeah, okay. There's no way we're coming back from here. Like, um, uh, the, the only way would have been through if we actually drawn a skeleton here. We could have got another strong creature out, another counter on him, uh, on, the, on the vine gecko. And um, <clears throat> then we could have perhaps survived one more round somehow. But yeah, if our opponent just attacks with everything here, we lose. There's no way we can win. That that swarm, uh, scoot swarm, just just goes insane. I had unfortunately I had no removal for it when they when they drew it. Yeah, they just click all the time. I just can't see it. I don't want to wait so long. Okay, so unfortunately this wraps up uh, the draft. Uh, we had two, just two games with terrible draws, and this game we were just outclassed with um, <coughs> our opponent's deck was just crazy good. Uh, admittedly, had a had a lot of really really strong rares with the swarm shambler and the scoot swarm. 
these things happen that's how you do sometimes um at least we got to four wins i hope you enjoyed the content if you did please do not forget to subscribe leave a like and also uh i'd like to hear your feedback in the comment section and i'd love to see you in that next video and i'll keep on uh, going with these tutorial type drafts where i try to teach you a few concepts that uh, have helped me a lot in uh, drafting and have got me to mythic last season and uh, i'm really hoping that yeah, you can also learn a lot from it <clears throat> again i'm learning as, as well but i'm hoping that i can teach you at least some of the things that i already know by now anyway see you in the next video take care